How you doing guys? Today I am starting the reassembly of the Little Mule's 8-speed transmission. Uh, but before we actually dive into all the gears and shafts and whatnot in order to put this transmission back together, I wanted to show you something. Uh, something that I have found fairly common with these 3-speeds and 8-speed transmissions. Now I have the brake shaft, or in this case the cluster gear shaft, whichever one you want to call it. And I have the input shaft right there in the cases. Now the cases are not bolted together, but they are absolutely surface to surface. There is no air gap between the cases. So essentially it's like it's bolted together. But one thing you will notice with these transmissions is if you grab the shafts, there's a lot of play. So even if this thing was all you know tightened down, you still have a fair amount of play in the shafts, uh, input and brake. And you can hear this one too. So just like the rear, when I did the, uh, the differential, I put the uh, thrust washer in there to, to soak up that slack. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I essentially pulled, went through my stash of little bits and pieces and I was able to locate two bronze thrust washers in my stash of stuff. And essentially I did the exact same thing as I did in my prior video, making the spacer for the differential. Just sat there and, and sanded them down. Um, actually you can see where I sanded it down to a point where I just kind of trial and error, kind of put it back together, you know, take it apart, put it together, take it out, you know, go back and forth, back and forth until I got the clearance that I wanted to get. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop these thrust washers into the corresponding shafts. This one here goes with this one, obviously on the inside, and this one goes to right inside that bearing cup for the input shaft. And I will lightly bolt the cases together and I'll show you the difference in the amount of play. So let's take a look here. That's a good eighth of an inch, almost. And if we go here, about the same also. So let me just pull these cases apart, put my shims in, and we'll see how much better it got. So just before I bolt everything together, let me just show you a quickie on how this goes together. The input shaft actually has a factory thrust washer that goes right there, It's I'll just, I'll kick it off to the side so you can see it. That is a factory shim that is supposed to be there. So in order to measure the end play of the shaft or the input shaft, you got to have that washer in place. So with that installed, I can drop the input shaft into the case itself. Now it's got to go in and it's got a seat all the way to the base sitting on the shim. Now the, now the brake shaft or the cluster gear shaft, one end of the shaft actually has a gear as part of the shaft. That's, that's how it is. Now there is no factory shim on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop this gear cluster into, into the case. With that being said, my shims are both gonna be on this side of the shaft. I'll take this one, drop that on real nice and neat. So that just fits nice and neat right there. And now this one, it gets a little tricky because you gotta kinda do a balancing act on the top of this particular shaft in order for it to fit inside the bearing cup. Now, if I'm gonna do some final assembly, I'm just gonna get that as close as I can with the camera, I would put a little touch of bearing grease right there just to glue it all to kinda of gather you know, kind of make it stay put while I put it together, put the other case on. And the reason for that is how I would be trying to line up a whole bunch of different shafts. You know, this one through the case, the big, huge, you know, primary uh, shaft and gear in the, uh, in the opposing case, because those, those bearings are both closed. Plus at that point in time, I'll also have the reverse gear shaft in place. So trying to get it all lined up, I'm going to have to kind of twist and bend and, you know, kind of line everything up and that washer would always fall off. 
So I will, when I do the actual final assembly, I'll put a little bit of grease on there, a little bearing grease at the end of the shaft, drop that shim on it. That'll hold it in place and then drop the case on. I'm going to put the opposing case cover on now, bolt it down lightly in the four bolts. So that way everything's stationary. And I'll show you how much end, uh, end play we've taken out of those shafts. With the case halves back together and four of the six bolts, these two bolts and those two bolts, okay, with those just lightly snugged into place. You don't, you don't have to torque them like stupid. Just snug them down so that way you know the case halves are absolutely uh, mated uh, together. We can go ahead and check the shafts. They move. That one moves nice and smooth. And this one moves nice and smooth. But let's take a look at how much play has been taken out of this shaft. Ready? There's apps. There's just absolutely really no play compared to what it used to be. And that's that one. And if we come down here and we grab this one and go back and forth. Just barely. Now I do want a little bit of play in these shafts. You don't want to just have them super tight or even snug. You got to have this shaft free, free wheeling, you know, free play. There's got to be a little bit of play. Now there'll be even a more play once I put gasket sealer, or if you run a gasket in general, the thickness of the gasket will end up being there. But that is beautiful in my opinion. Nice and nice and smooth, nice and barely anything. And if we go down here again, and that spins perfectly. All right, so with all that, let's go ahead and start assembling the transmission. All right, so let's start assembling this transmission. Number one thing that goes in is the input shaft shim. I'm gonna just slide that right into position so it's just, you know, fairly centered because we're gonna drop the shaft in. Next is the high low shift gear or slide gear, if you wanna call it. That goes onto the fork, gear up, groove down. Okay, so that goes in next. Next is the actual input shaft. Now I got this thing coated in <laughs> assembly lube. I don't know why I did that first hand, but basically you're gonna drop it in so it lines up. It's gonna pass through the shift fork gear and it's gonna sit down just like that, seated all the way down onto the shim. Next, is this little gear, which is, I have no idea what it's called, but it's basically this, the gear, the high-low gear slides on this particular gear. You can go ahead and just drop that right on. Now it may, it's gonna get to a point, it may stop, you just kinda turn it until it seats itself. Oop, there it goes. Seats itself all the way down. All right, so with that, we have basically the high-low um, gears installed. Now that we have the input shaft and the basically the high-low slide gears in place, we could either go one or two directions. We can start putting the shift forks back in, or we can put the brake shaft cluster gear shaft in first. Now, technically, I believe the manual says these have to go in first, and essentially, you have two different ones, one with a smaller gear, one with the, with the larger gear. The larger gear is first gear in reverse. The smaller gear is second and third. Second and third gear goes in first. And you can tell the way you know that is this. This U-shape that you see right here, don't mind the wire tie, uh, that faces up for both forks. There's one on that one. And then there's one on this one. Okay. Oop, sorry. What the heck am I looking at? There it is. Sorry. All right. These detents go into the block. So at the end of the day, these shift forks right over here, they will face each other and the gears will be on the outboard. Now with the bigger gear, or actually either one of the gears um, in place, because you gotta kind of put this all together all, all as one, because this actually has to go over the shaft and then drop into the block right there, okay? It just gets cumbersome trying to get the large gear of the cluster gear beyond those gears. So I typically will put, just start to assemble these shafts first before I reinstall 
the shift works and that's pretty simple just take your brake shaft i mean i know i don't have any grease or oil on this yet but i'm just showing you for purposes sake you drop the shaft in you take your cluster gear drop your cluster gear down it engages the gear on the input shaft okay so that's pretty simple but if we notice this gear kind of over kind of covers the big brake shaft so before we can even do any of that we got to make sure we put the brake shaft gear in which is or the big the big cluster gear here so the big cluster gear will then will initially go in first then we'll take our entire brake shaft cluster gear set up it's actually kind of easier to do it without there you go and there we are so now we have pretty much all the shafts in place and we can still get to these little shift forks they will go in eventually there they are there's one okay so, and there's a trick to get these things in place and i'll talk about that in one second i've removed the shafts uh that we just that i just placed in the case so i could show you how the detent spring and ball bearings go back into this little cavity where's my flashlight here it is i'll show it to you right now if we look in here we can see that there is a cavity that runs basically from right there this hole right there straight through and that's how you're going to install these and then you can see it right uh, let's let me get that there it is and you can see that there's a cavity all the way through and inside that cavity are these parts you have a spring two ball bearings and a control rod the control rod goes inside the spring and then a ball bearing goes on either end of the spring so they engage the detents of your shift forks now this can be a real bad word nightmare and you can fill in the bad word and the reason why is this you got to drop one shift fork in kind of situate it in such a way that the ball bearing will go into the shift fork itself like actually kind of detent then with the rod in the spring you got to slide that through this hole until it kind of engages that slot now clearly the spring is going to stick out of the hole a little bit or out of this poor part that's when you got to take the next ball bearing and kind of stick it on the end of the spring and then take a punch like this insert it in here like that depress everything all at once while you're shoving the next shift fork which would be the bigger one right here the uh, first and reverse gear and with like one hand pushing this in holding the detent ball and spring in the hole and pushing down on the shift fork you got to make like a kind of a quick one shot motion push down and pull out at the same time in order to get the shaft to go in at the same time pushing the ball bearing in if you follow me so that way it actually kind of goes the ball bearing rides up and hits the first uh detent slot this can take multiple multiple times in order to get it straight number one the ball bearing constantly falls off i've used grease i've used magnetics it doesn't matter this is a total nightmare uh, trying to get this back in I'm gonna set up the camera in such a way that I could try to show you uh, me doing it it's probably gonna take me about 10 different times in order to get it to work so I only bore you with the one that was successful all right now again this is another one of those period times where I'm prob I'm going to put the shit the other shafts back in first so when we set the camera back up you'll see that the other shafts are back in place i will have pre-lubed everything all together so that way they, there's no need to pull them out again and hopefully all of those or both of those shift forks will go in again this is the first one that goes in it goes in this position just like that so the fork faces up this is going to be the second one that goes in this one the gear faces up so that way both forks face each other real quick notation before we dig into trying to put those shift forks back in 
I forgot to mention when we put the brake or I call it a brake shaft, but this big bull, or this, this is not the bull gear or this bull shaft, if you want to call it, whatever the hell it is. Remember that there is a factory steel shim washer that needs to be put in there first. So you're going to drop that shim washer in, then you're going to put the brake shaft or this big gear shaft in place. I'll pre-lube that all before we uh, before I actually send it home, but I forgot to tell you that just before we put the shift forks in because I'm going to put these shafts back in. With the uh, shift forks installed, and as you can tell, it was a little cumbersome, um, but they, they went in, they're locked in, they're even, they're in the neutral position right now, actually. We're going to go ahead and put the slide gear, this this big guy right here, that goes on next, just obvious, this has all been pre-lubed, it drops right in, just kind of turn it real gently until it seats itself. And that I believe is it seated all the way down I'm just trying to take a look here it looks as if it is whoops sorry uh, looks as if it is um, so we should be all set there I'm just making sure that this thing is seated yeah it is all right good next is the reverse gear and we got to take the reverse gear shaft just go ahead and drop that in till it seats next is the reverse gear You'll see that there's one side flat and one side machined. The other thing you'll notice is the gear teeth on this edge are straight cut and these are a little bit ground down and the reason for that is that's what aids in the in the gear engagement. So the shoulder piece or the machine side goes down. You'll just go ahead slide that in, twist it until it engages, all set. I am going to just prelude that real quick. And then we'll go on to the next piece, which is there's a larger gear that goes on this shaft with the Woodruff key. So we'll get that installed. So with the fresh Woodruff key in place, I, I bought a new one. Uh, I am going to take this gear, which is the top gear of the cluster gear. Let me just switch my hands again. I'm sorry. I'm just going to turn it until it seats itself. Now, if we notice right here, the new Woodruff key sticks out just a hair just a hair above, uh, just a touch proud above the gear. And that is not going to work. 
And the reason why that's not going to work is because I made the shim. So basically the shim will go on. Now with that, this thing is actually riding or rocking on that woodruff key. That woodruff key would basically start to lathe my shim, which is totally not acceptable. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull that gear off just like this. Put that on to the side. I'm going to just take the uh, wire dikes here real there. Just gingerly pull this out. I'm going to go upstairs and take this and put this in the vise. And I'm just going to file this top edge down. So that way it's uh, even with the gear. That way when I put my shim on, it lays nice and flat. With the Woodruff key corner knocked down, I can now take that, take the gear and hopefully it'll just slide right on. Do it really kind of lightly. Boom. There we go. Nice and tight. No play. And we are definitely below the surface of the gear now. I can actually take the shim that I made and drop that right into place because that's all done. And it sits nice and flat. So that's all set. Next is we're going to put the differential together for the last time and get that thing installed. With one half of the uh, differential in the vise, I'm in position to start putting it back together. I uh, have all the bits and pieces here laid out on the uh, workbench. Our pinion gear, our eight pinion gears. I got some brand new hardened 3 8 bolts, some hardened washers, um, and some lock nuts as well as the shim that I made in my prior video. So it's pretty simple. I'm going to put a little bit of bearing grease right here, uh, right where the shim is. I'll put a little bit on the back uh, or the yeah this side or that side of the uh, axle gear on both sides. Um, the only thing special about the pinion gears is they just got to be opposing. So in other words, one has the shank down, one has the shank up, one down, one up, one down, one up, all the way around. And then we can drop the uh, axles in, or we can drop the axle in first if, if you wanted to. But in any case, I'm going to do that real quick. Um, and then we'll get the bull gear, which is right here. We'll get the bull gear in place, and then I'll show you how. Essentially, I'm going to torque it, but with a, with a pinch nut like that, that style lock nut, or even if it was a nylon insert nut, you, you really can't torque it because you get like a false positive on the torque wrench but we'll get it together um, and then I'll show you how it all looks. So hopefully it works. <laughs> all right, with all of the pinion gears in place, and we can see one up, one down, one up, one down, up, down, up, down. So we're all good there. I did put a little bit of grease on the end of the act. Obviously, I, as I indicated, I put some grease between the uh, shim, which is in there, and the gear face. Um, and I put a little grease on the end of the axle shaft because they touch, well, because of the spacer. Um, but if we grab the, uh, the axle and we spin, everything spins real nice and smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bull gear on. Then I'm going to put the uh, additional axle and cover or side plate, and I'll start doing the bolts. With the uh, differential all back together, I torqued the bolts to 35 foot-pounds, um, which may be a little bit, you know, more than what they're supposed to be, but even with this little crimp nut, it's it's not it's never coming apart. Um, everything looks real nice and clean. Obviously, that shim is in there. I can't spin this right now with one hand. It is pretty tight, but it's, it actuates real nice and smooth. I'm going to go ahead and drop it into the uh, case here, make sure... You lubricate really well the uh, axle bearing at the outboard, that Torrington bearing. I'm going to put some assembly lube on the big carrier bearing, and I'm going to drop this in. The only thing really to of note is the bolt heads, okay? These are, you've got the nuts on one side, we've got the bolt heads on the other side. The bolt heads have to go to the mushroom gear. So make sure that, I should have probably said that earlier, make sure you run all your bolts in the right in the same direction. And when we drop it in, the bolt head side goes towards the big mushroom gear. All right, so let me lubricate this up and drop this in.
the diff is set back in the case. It it functions properly. There's no thing. It's tight. There is a little bit of a tight spot in it, but in general, that'll just wear itself in. It's it's really not that bad, and I'm not concerned about it. Um, I have one of the shims that I made for the uh, brake cluster gear shaft that's in place. I just put a little bit of grease on that. The input shaft uh, shim, which I have right there, which I made, I'll go ahead and just and uh, bearing grease glue it into place in the bearing when I get ready to put the case halves together. Essentially, this is what's going to transpire. I'm just going to clean these surfaces super, super clean, both of them like you're cleaning a gun. If you ever cleaned a gun, you, you keep doing it until the swatches are clean. You keep doing it until the paper towels are perfectly clean. Uh, then with that, I'll butter it up real lightly with some gray Permatex, drop the case have on, and then start bolting it back together. A little bit of blue Loctite on the bolts. I torqued them to 30 foot pounds, uh, crisscross pattern, so that way we can get the cases to seat real nice. You can see the gasket sealer is oozing out. Just I'm just going to leave it alone. I'll wait till this fur fully cures in this position. I'll leave it in this position for about 24 hours, and then I'll just take a razor knife and cut off the excess so you don't see it. But Essentially, that's all sealed in. The only thing that's left is to put in the grease seals. Oh, uh, for example, the shim, perfect. This spins real nice and smooth. No play whatsoever. And for the input shaft, same thing. Spins super smooth, absolutely no play. So I'm psyched about that. Obviously, the diff spins, no issues. Um, all right. Let's put those grease seals in. Installing the seals, which is basically the last step in my opinion. Um, just get the seal that corresponds with the shaft. We're, I'm working on the uh, brake cluster, uh, the brake uh, cluster gear shaft. Just uh, find, I'm just gonna find a socket that fits over that and then goes nice and flush. And that's it. Put a little bit of lubricate, a little bit of oil right here on the bottom of the shaft. Make sure there's no sharp edges. Slip this thing on by hand, wiggle it on down, and then just go ahead and I'm just going to hand press it right into place. That's how I'm going to do all the seals, the axle seals, the input seal. Um, and then we can call this transmission done. Now I'm going to leave it in this position for about 24 hours before I flip it over on its side. Um, that way this sealer can cure. I am going to squirt some sealer right here. That's where that shift detent ball in the spring went in. So I'll just take some uh, Permatex. I'll clean it out with some brake cleaner. Take some Permatex and just kind of with my finger just to fill that in. And this transmission project is done. So let's see real quick. Field stripped and cleaned it. Replaced a whole bunch of the bearings including the axle bearings. Shimmed the shaft so there's no play in them. Shimmed the differential. Cleaned it all up, put it back together, torqued everything in, resealed it, putting brand new seals in it. And this is a particular, this particular transmission is a model 5091, I believe, um, which is the considered the heavy duty transmission for wheel horse. All right, guys. Oh, and just real quick, basically the the other eight speed transmissions are all about the same. Is really nothing, um, you know, miraculous about them.
they all come apart the same. They all kind of go back together the same. There might be a little tiny nuances, but if you follow the video, hopefully you found it helpful. You should be able to tear yours apart and put it back together without much issue. All right, guys, thank you very much for making it through this long video, but it, I, hopefully it was informative and you enjoyed it. As always, please subscribe. Please ring the bell so you get notified of any new videos I may put up, as well as if you could please hit the, uh, the thumbs up for the like. That would be greatly appreciated. As always, have a great day and thank you for watching.